Hello, redesigners. Happy Monday. It's um, Monday at noon EST, and I'm Cece from CC Restyled. I'm a furniture artist in Indianapolis and a brand ambassador for Redesign with Prima. And um, Mondays in November, I am doing live tutorials every Monday at noon, um, at least for the month of November. So um, here we are. And today we're going to be doing some decoupage with the um, decor tissue, which is, if, if you haven't used it or seen it or felt it, it's amazing. So I generally do my best to avoid decoupage unless I have to, um, especially with paper because it's a pain, you know? You have to use the right adhesives and, um, you know, what do you seal it with, you know, and iron it, like, you know, it's a lot of steps. It's doable, but it's a lot of steps. Um, and uh, if I do decoupage, I usually use fabric um, for the most part because there's so many options. Um, it's easy to use and, uh, you know, it's just easier. Um, and it looks better in my opinion. Um, but the decor, the decor tissue from Redesign with Prima is a really nice happy medium. Um, I use that because it's a very heavy, it's not like a paper and it's heavier than a tissue. It feels similar to like a dryer sheet, I guess, um, in weight and texture. So if you can see real close, see how fibrous, fibrous it is. It's almost like a fabric and it decoupages like a fabric, which is good in my book because it's so much easier and um, dare I say makes decoupage fun. So uh, why work harder when you can work smarter? Um, it comes in a variety of different patterns. I chose a few different ones um, to use on some drawer sides. You can decoupage the front of a dresser, you can decoupage a canvas, a wood panel, just about anything um, that you might want. But I like to do drawer sides um, for several different reasons. A, it's about the perfect size. So um, drawer sides are a perfect size to add some, you know, tissue to. You know, you don't waste much and, you, you know, you get a good coverage. Um, also, you know, a lot of people don't like to paint crazy patterns and colors and all this loud stuff um, like some of us do. Some people like to keep it neutral. Some people feel like they have to keep it neutral in order to sell it. And, you know, some people have a clientele base that wants a little more tame. You know, whites and grays and tans and, um, you know, things that are not so loud. And, you know, that's okay. Everybody has their own style. But I get a lot of questions and I see a lot of comments, people saying, I really wish I could, um, you know, get creative and do what I want, but I have to paint white because that's what my customers want. And that's okay. Um, a good way to exercise your creativity and get some of those colors and patterns and fun things out that won't compromise the neutrality of your your client's piece or your piece or, you know, whatever um, look you're trying to achieve on the outside is um, a good way to get your creativity out is do the drawer sides. So, you know, when it's shut, you can't really see it and you might have a perfectly nice white distressed um, classy piece. But then when you open the drawer sides, you know, you have this little party going on inside. So it's um, a nice conspicuous way to get your jollies out. You know what I'm saying? And, and do some fun, creative things. So um, I like to do, as I said, decoupage on the sides of drawers with the decor tissue. So as you can see, even though it's a nice heavy weight, um, it, some of the patterns and colors can be a little thinner. So a little bit transparent. See how you can kind of see through it a little bit. So um, for that reason, I like to paint my drawer sides. Uh, I usually go with white or a very light shade because, um, so let's say, you know, the, the tissues that have a little bit more color in them, um, if you put white behind that, it will, um, you know, make the color a little bit more vibrant. It'll give it, see how it gives it that white background to brighten it up and, and really let that color show. It's a lot more, um, let me show, see if you can scooch on in here a little bit. Um, see how it just brightens up the color as opposed to, you know, say putting it on a dark surface. You know, it kind of, you can still see the color, obviously, but it darkens it up a little bit, you know. Not a ton, but enough to where I like to start with a white base of paint. This is just bare white paint. I haven't sealed it or anything like that. There's no need to. Um, and then I'm going to use um, an adhesive. You can use 
You could use Mod Podge, you can use sealers. Um, there's a variety of different, in a pinch I used Quick and Thick one time, shh, because I didn't have any other adhesives on me at the time, and it worked perfectly. Um, so, you know, ideally you wanna use, not wood glue, but uh, anything that dries clear or transparent. So, um, I think we're just gonna go ahead and start with this piece. Uh, and you can pick and choose what areas of the um, tissue that you want to use, but I'm not super picky and I like this pattern. It's, it's all pretty, so um, we're just going to make it easy on ourselves and slap it on there. That way we can just cut our bottom and our top. Now you can pre-measure and then lay your piece to fit your drawer side or whatever you're decoupaging. Um, you can do that. Um, and that's not too terribly difficult. You just need a ruler and a tape measure and some scissors or a blade or what have you. Rotary cutter works great too. Um, however, I like to adhere my piece and then cut it to fit. That way I know I didn't measure wrong. I know it's gonna fit perfectly. And um, you know, there's really not a whole lot of negatives to that. So what I'm using today to adhere my um, decoupage tissue is the 3D matte gel. I know it's backwards, I'm sorry. 3D matte gel um, from the Finnebear line from Prima Marketing. It is, um, you can use it for a few different things. I'm using it today as an adhesive. And um, it is, it looks white, like a paste, but it dries clear. And like I said, when you're decoupaging these tissues, we want them to dry clear um, for a couple of reasons. A, they're uh, a little bit, you know, like a dryer sheet, they're not um, impervious to, you know, liquid. So whatever you use will possibly, you know, kind of uh, appear on top, squeeze through the little tiny holes a little bit. Does that make sense? Um, so you want it to dry clear. And that also depends on how much you apply. I like to go heavy because um, in my experience, these thick types of mediums dry fairly quickly. So unless you're doing a really tiny area at a time, it dries quickly and then you just have to reapply it. So I go thick. Um, I go thick, I go hard or go home on just about everything I do, and applying adhesive is no different. So again, yes, it, it's gonna go on white, but don't fret, it will dry clear. Um, so I'm just gonna cover my surface with my adhesive of choice, in this case, 3D Matte Gel. And I love this stuff. I've, I've decoupaged with lots of different mediums, and so far, this is my favorite for a variety of reasons. It dries quick, it dries clear, it's easy to use. Um, the consistency is perfect for grabbing onto that tissue and holding onto it, keeping it in place while it dries. I used to use Mod Podge before I knew any better. And most people I feel do use Mod Podge for decoupage. So, um, you know, that's pretty common. However, um, even though there's different uh, specialty Mod Podges, I've used all those as well. For whatever reason, every time I decoupage with it, um, when I go to put it on there like this, my fabric, my paper, whatever, mostly with fabric, so when I put it on like this, it doesn't all stick. You know, like parts will start falling off and all that, so um, I don't love Mod Podge, but if that's what you have, it will work. Um, I don't know, it's just something about the consistency that I don't like of, you know, most of the Mod Podge formulas. But my favorite one, not to knock on Mod Podge, is the fabric one because it's the thickest and I think it works the best. So um, anyways, so I am applying my tissue and I'm just smoothing out any wrinkles if there are any, which usually there's not. This tissue is thick enough that it's not, it doesn't wrinkle easily and that's amazing because I don't need to bust out an iron and parchment paper and then all this different stuff just to get a smooth um, surface. So it's uh, much more enjoyable of a way to decoupage. Um, there's a variety of different designs. Um, they, a lot of them are floral. So if you're not a huge fan of floral, there's also some damask patterns that are really pretty and um, Oh, let's we'll see what else is there. Different colors. There's some new ones coming out. Oh man, when are they coming out? Some new decoupage tissues coming out. I wanna say at the end of the month, but I could be wrong. Is Roz, if Roz is on here, maybe she, maybe she knows when they're coming out, the new designs. And there's some less 
flowery ones. Um, there's some less flowery ones in the new release, but I'm terrible at remembering things, so I have to ask Roz, if she knows, when those are being released, but so far they're my favorite. Hey everybody, um, thank you for hopping on. Um, I see a question, where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? I saw a question. Oh, what is the trick to decoupage the inside of the drawer? Um, if you mean the inside as in like the bottom or the whole inside, you're gonna to wanna to do exactly what I'm doing now. Um, same process, just on a different surface. So um, paint is optional. Like I said, if you're just hopping on, I like to paint my surface because as you can see, the um, tissues are just a little bit, you know, transparent, just a little bit. You can see through it just enough to where I like to paint my surface a, a white or light color to give it some brightness See how much brighter it is on the white than it is not on the white. So paint, optional. Um, and then adhesive of your choice. Cut your fabric to fit or lay it and then trim it, which is what I'm doing. I laid it and then I'm trimming it. So same difference, but on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Um, and since these sheets are obviously not as large as the inside of the drawer, you're going to have to do some piecing together, which is easy enough because, um, <coughs> excuse me, if you look at, if you look at the pattern, you know, there's not really a whole lot you have to line up. It's just kind of a, a fun, you know, pattern with little different elements and a little bit of distress. So you don't have to line them up. Um, and, and then at that point, you either want to butt seam them together when you're, when you're um, using more than one piece, which is just um, butting them together and laying them down. Or you want a very, very, very minimal overlap um, because these are a little transparent Depending on the design, the overlap could show just a bit. So um, it's all kind of dependent on the pattern you choose. And if you paint the base color a dark color, like navy or black, it's probably not gonna show that overlap um, very much. So, all right, so I'm just taking a sharp blade and I'm trimming um, to size my decoupage tissue here. Um, you wanna make sure you have a sharp blade always because if you use a dull blade I know it's sharp I stabbed myself in the finger last night so I had to repaint one drawer side because there was blood all over it true story so um, you want to use a sharp blade because if you don't use a sharp blade uh, you're just gonna drag the tissue it's not gonna cut well it's gonna drag and then you're just gonna have a you know a little bunched up section that you have to smooth out and that's no fun so without stabbing yourself Trim gently the excess off and look how much I have left. I can use that on another drawer, on another project, um, whatever you want. So obviously I'm gonna save that for later. So um, like I said, it's pretty difficult to get wrinkles with this product, but you know, you wanna make sure and you know smooth it out just in case. Now after we got that laid on and nice and um, smoothed out, we're gonna apply another layer of our adhesive. Um, I like to do this because I like to go around the edges to kind of, you know, seal the deal, <laughs> pun intended, and seal the edges. And then um, I just go over the front, you know, quickly one time. And remember, it dries clear. Whatever adhesive you use, you want to dry transparent. Um, you don't have to do this. You can go straight to, um, your favorite sealer. Um, I like to use a satin clear coat because I like a satin finish, okay? So you can do this step and let it dry and be done, or you can do sealer, let it dry and be done, or you can do both, which is what I'm gonna do, and um, let it dry. So one more layer of, of adhesive and then let it dry, and then I'm gonna do some satin clear coat over this because I like a satin finish. That's my preference on just about everything is a satin finish, so um, that's a personal preference. You can do gloss, you can do flat, you can do semi-gloss, you can do whatever finish this matte gel, it's matte. You can do matte, which this matte gel is, so um, that's up to you. I just like to know that this is secure and attached and not going anywhere. So that's why I personally do the second coat of um, the adhesive. My 
one of my biggest nightmares is having a phone call or email or text from a client in, you know, a week or a month or, you know, six months saying, um, my drawer sides that you made for me were pretty, but they're falling apart. They're all coming off. I don't want to hear that. That's like my worst nightmare because it reflects badly, you know, on your craftsmanship and it's a little embarrassing and uh, also it's more work. So this extra step um, can possibly create less work for you in the long run. So that's why I do it. But um, I'm gonna let that dry. And then after that's dry, like I said, um, I can move on or I can add my clear coat, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, yes, you can definitely decoupage scrapbook paper. Um, if I do use paper for decoupage, I, I pretty much only use scrapbook paper because it's the less, le least frustrating, I think. Um, so when I use paper, I, here's what I do. I do, I don't paint my surface because usually paper is not transparent, it's opaque. So I cut my paper to size. On my surface, I apply a layer of, a thin layer of the adhesive just like we did for this tissue let it dry just a little bit so that it's not completely dry. Then I take a spray adhesive and I spray the back of my paper and then I apply it to my um, surface that has the almost dry adhesive on it. Does that make sense? So you have this tacky surface and then you have the adhesive on the um, scrapbook paper. And then when you put them together, it's like, they just like hold hands and they're like, we ain't going nowhere. And scrapbook paper doesn't bubble. It's very hard to wrinkle. So um, yeah, scrapbook paper is great. Um, sometimes in the sealing process, you can get bubbles. Um, and generally, once it's dry, you can run a medium to low iron, um, you know, iron set, iron set on medium to low over that um, paper that has been sealed and get those um, wrinkles or bubbles out. Um, so there's that. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry. Actually, let's do the other side real quick so that they can both, uh, both be getting pretty and ready and drying. All right, so, no, I don't have the fronts of my drawers prepped yet. Not yet. So, again, in case you're just hopping on or you missed it earlier, we're decoupaging the drawer sides, which I have painted in a uh, white, color it's a, you don't have to paint it white white it goes with um you know the design that i'm going for so <coughs> that is why i chose my oh let's do a different one let's do a different drawer because i want to show you a different pattern of the decoupage paper okay so uh let's do the top draw there's the top draw it's a little bit smaller see how it's a little bit shorter that's okay um so again i painted white because it makes my colors more vibrant, see? Um, wait, which one did I, I think I used this on that one. So this one, and I'm sorry I don't know the names of these patterns because there's so many and I can't possibly remember them all, but um, it's pretty, I know that. So this one's pretty in peach, and that's not what it's called, that's just what I'm calling it. And there is text on many of them, so you wanna make sure you apply it the correct way, like, uh, I suppose backwards is all right if it doesn't bother you, but it bothers some people, and um, I like to make sure my text is facing the right way, okay? Uh, so don't make that mistake. So I'm just gonna think, do, I think I wanna do this little section of my decoupage paper over here, so let's do this, this drawer side then. That way we can butt it up right there, not waste any, get a nice clean straight edge and use the excess for the other side. So again, I'm using 3D Matte Gel from Premium Marketing. It is in the Fenabear line. You can use it for um, multiple different applications, but my favorite is for decoupaging the decor tissue. See how thick the consistency is? It doesn't drip, it doesn't, um, um, it's just thick so it holds that tissue in place long enough for it to dry. It's the perfect consistency, in my opinion. So I'm just covering it with a, a chip brush. You don't probably want to use your fancy brushes for adhesive, although I do wash them out with soap and water. 
um, after I use them um, or pitch them if I've forgotten about them and they've dried all hard and crusty. But usually I just stick with a chip brush because why not? All right, so we've got our surface covered, edges, top here. Now I'm gonna fit my little part, reading the correct way. I'm gonna fit my front portion that I chose onto my draw side, and I'm just lining up the top. I wanna make sure the top is lined up. You don't want a wonky, crooked top. Even though it's just a drawer side and it's not gonna show most of the time, um, like I was saying earlier about the craftsmanship, you want uh, to pay attention to those little details and make sure it's lined up. Okay, I'm just gonna smooth it on, make sure it's lined up here in this corner. Smooth it on. Just rub it in with your palm. And you can feel, like you'll feel some of the adhesive squirting through through the front, and that's okay. Again, it dries clear, so no worries. Um, sharp blade. I wanna pull my tissue tight when I'm doing this because if you don't, like I said, it'll just drag and bunch. So you wanna pull the tissue tight as well as have a sharp blade and boom, voila. Nice and crisp edge. Same down here. There we go. And then I like to run my finger along the edges just to make sure they're down and smooth. No little fibers and hairs sticking out. No little scragglers. We don't want no scragglers. All right, so again, at this point you could be done, but I like to protect my decoupage. So if it was a, like drawer sides, I mean, they don't get a whole lot of use or traffic on them like a tabletop. So you could get away with just leaving it at this point. I like the extra protection. Um, that another coat gives and also the satin sheen from the satin sealer. So I'm gonna do one more quick little um, jobby with the adhesive. Make sure you get your edges, okay? So you're seaming those edges down, okay? Like, you know, many a times when things like fabric or paper or, you know, whatever fails and in, in time and starts kind of coming up, Many of the times it's because the edges were not, or have become loose, you know, weren't secure or became loose. Um, that's where, you know, damage starts to happen. The edge starts coming up, peeling up, rolling up, whatever. And then, you know, it's over from there. Like if you think about, you know, your jeans, a hole in your jeans, you get one little rip and then it just kind of grows into, you know, a whole big old hole in your knee. You know what I'm saying? So. It, it just starts from one little corner that's not pressed down, like this one here, and then it's all over. So I like to make sure the edges and corners are really adhered well. Okay, so one more time, I'm going over it one more time with my adhesive. Okay, and then I'm gonna let that dry. It doesn't take long at all to dry. This, this um, matte gel, 3D matte gel, dries in, I don't know, probably 15 minutes, I would imagine, with no fan. I like to put a fan on it, because I'm impatient, and it dries, like, it's almost drying on me right now, because I'm talking so much and not working quick enough, but there we go. So, boom, let that dry, and again, at this point, I could be done here if I wanted to. But um, I like a satin finish as opposed to a um, <coughs> matte one, at least in this design. So that's why I'm going to seal after this dries. Just reiterating that you do not have to. Here we go. There's that. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. And then we're going to move on to... Um, so I do have a drawer that is already dry. So this is the one that I did. I think I did this last night so that it would dry and we could um, work with it this morning. So as you can see, all dry. All dry. And this design is a little more, um, what's the word? A little more uh, neutral, monotone. It's not as colorful as the flowers that you just saw. So um, that's okay. Um, 
what I'm going to do is add some flowery transfers to jazz it up a little bit because why not? So what I'm gonna do is um, the outside of the piece, I have a color in mind that I'm gonna paint it. And so on the drawers on the inside, I like to take a complementing or contrasting color um, and put those on the drawer side. So when you pull it open, it's that pop of color and it's um, impactful, you know what I'm saying? So in this particular instance, um, I'm gonna paint, well, unless I change it, I'm planning to paint the outside of this piece with primarily navy, like a dark navy blue. So when um, they open the drawer sides, it's got these patterns and flowers that are kind of peachy, coral, pink, um, which is the opposite of navy blue, but they complement each other well because they're opposite. So I cannot decide between uh, these two transfers because um, I'm kind of indecisive. Um, I, I really want to use these flowers, but I know that I want the, you know, to incorporate some peachish coral colors. So, um, I think when I can't decide, I usually just end up going with both. So I think that's probably what we're going to do. I don't know. I'm going to open up and see how the colors look together and then determine at that point. So let me check. Uh, is there any other questions I missed? Real quick. Mm. Okay, I don't see any questions right away. So I'm sorry if I miss. Oh, okay. Would you apply a poster the same as you would scrapbook paper? Yes. Um, I do the same method with poster as I do scrapbook paper. I don't love using posters for decoupage only because they usually have a pretty glossy front and um, that doesn't play well with sealer most of the time. It's doable and it turns out okay, but uh, it's just a little more, um, I don't know what the word is. Uh, it takes a little more effort in my opinion, whereas scrapbook paper usually is pretty uh, matte and kind of takes that sealer better than a poster. But yeah, I I do the same um, process. So adhesive on the surface, spray adhesive on the um, material to be decoupaged, let it dry just, just below tacky. So not quite wet, but not quite dry, just tacky enough to stick together. And when those two stick together, they, um, they don't, they don't create a lot of bubbles and wrinkles. So that's why I like that method. And then, um, seal, let dry and iron out the bubbles and wrinkles. So same with the poster. Yes. And let's see. Um, okay. I don't, if I missed your question again, I'm sorry. And I will try to go back and, um, <laughs> Debbie, I will try to go back and catch them later, but okay. I'm going to keep going. So yes. Cut them both up. That's what I'm gonna do because I'm so indecisive that um, I can't decide. I can't commit to one or the other. So I'm just gonna use both. I'm gonna show them both a little love. Right now, my favorite transfer is the elegance and flowers. Um, this one has the little cranes and these ta these tattoo looking flowers. See how those look kind of like old Japanese woodblock print flowers that are very reminiscent of tattoo art. I love these, so those are my favorite flowers. Also, these pretty little kind of almost watercolory looking guys. I love the colors, and but then, you know, I'm using navy blue, and navy blue and hot pink are just kind of like, you know, they're a no-brainer in my book. So, um, I think that the corals and the hot pinks will go together well, or at least we intend on trying to make them go together well. And, um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So. Uh, the transfers, if you haven't used or if you're not familiar with transfers quite yet, they come in, you know, a rolled up little tube here. Boom. Uh, they are taped together. I like to take that tape completely off in the beginning because otherwise it just messes me up. Um, but I take off that little tape completely that holds all the sheets together. And then when you're opening a transfer, make sure you be really careful, okay? Um, sometimes they have a mind of their own and they like to fly off the backing paper. However, if that happens and it sticks, the transfer sticks to itself, um, you're up Crap Creek and there's not really much bouncing back from a ruined transfer. 
Um, no easy fixes anyways. So you wanna be careful when you pull them out of the tube. Um, Cause you can blame the transfer, but if it happens, it's probably just because you weren't super careful with it. So heed my warning, be gentle. Be gentle with the, the transfers. They're your friends. So I'm gonna gently unroll my design here and there's the instructions, boop. If I had a dollar for every one of those instruction sheets that I pitched, I'd be rich. So look how pretty these are. I mean, really, how can that not be your favorite? Look at those colors. They're amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just choose a little section that I want to use on my drawer. I'm not gonna cover it with transfers because obviously I want my decoupage paper to, uh, or tissue to, to have an appearance. Um, I just wanna do little peaks of flower, flowers, mostly to add color and interest. I'm just gonna go with this top sheet because it's got my little favorite flower there. Um, and uh, let's see, I don't know if we'll use this little um, alien eyes looking flower. We might cut that guy off, but let's see what it's gonna look like. So if I have it, this is the front of my drawer, obviously. Um, so if I line it up here towards the front and kind of just let it spill off the edge, potentially that's what it is gonna look like on my drawer. So do I want that or do I want to turn it this way and let it spill off the top you know, edge or top corner and then use one of my pretty hot pink flowers over here to, um, uh, you know, Keep it company, I don't know. I'm thinking, my instinct is telling me, let's do this way. So we're gonna go ahead and cut. I like to use a paper cutter um, that I got from like Join Fabrics. It's like a, a 15 inch paper cutter. These slide perfectly through the paper cutter. I don't have it with me though. So we're just gonna use the grid lines that come on the backs of the new transfers. These things are awesome. So my grid line is there so I can make straight cuts and straight placements. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut right on this little grid line here. Um, before there was grid lines, I would take my fingernail or a permanent marker and draw the line or make a little crease where I needed to cut. Very technical. Very technical, the old fingernail crease trick. So these, these grid lines work much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fit my transfer piece. Um, I think that I am going to go ahead and leave my little alien eyes because they don't really show so much. They kind of um, disappear. So we're going to have that there. So now I got to figure out where I want to put my um, hot pink flowers. I, originally, I was thinking maybe I would, you know, lay one here or up here to overlap, but I kind of think I want my peachy coral flower to, to overlap over the hot pink because hot pink is a little loud. It can kind of take over visually. So I think I'm going to kind of use the hot pink, um, in a supporting role, not as the, um, lead actress, you know what I'm saying here? So I'm gonna just set that aside real quick, go ahead and open and I'll show you Lush Floral One. I'm gonna be honest, this is the first time that I have used Lush Floral One. First tube I've opened of this um, transfer. I'm pretty sure. At least I don't remember using it before, huh? <coughs> So another reason besides, besides the fact that I like the combination of the pinks and corals with navy blue, besides that reason, um, if you notice my decoupage tissues that I was using, um, most of them have, or one, one of the designs has mostly pinks and one of them has mostly corals. So um, what a good way to integrate more of those colors than to um, use them in my flowers. So. It's a way to take two different patterns and color palettes and make them go together um, cohesively, you know, and in, into one design. So, oh, okay. Carefully roll out your pattern or your um, decoupage. Oh, instruction sheet, there's another dollar. So look how bright and vibrant and pretty these are. Aren't they so pretty? I am not a girly girl, but hot pink is fun to look at. Oh, and look at this sheet. This sheet's got some little flowers here and then some, you know, singular guys here that will be perfect for what I'm doing. And then these little, I love these little twiggy berry things. I'm not sure what they're called, but they're on a few different designs. Um, a few, a couple different transfer designs. I love those. 
because um, you cut those out and you know sometimes you're looking at your placement and you're thinking there's a little bare spot there or what does that spot right there need? It needs a little something, something, but you don't want to, you know, put a whole gigantic pattern right there. Those little twiggy berry guys, twiggy berry things, I don't know what they're called. Those are perfect for those little spots or holes where you're like, that needs something. What does it need? Put a little twig with berries there and boom, problem solved. So looking at this, I think, okay, so let's hold up our first choice here. And then let's see what kind of makes sense to add to it. Um, I think we can do, no. Let's look at the next, oh, here we, here we go. Okay, so this next sheet, um, I should explain to you real quick. Um, in the Lush Floral 2, or Lush Floral 1 transfer, there is this big piece right here that comes on two sheets and you piece it together, okay? When you're laying down your transfer, you wanna put the two pieces seam together. There's also all these individual flowers that you can place wherever you please. So um, this part you line up, these parts you just slap on there wherever you want. So those are my favorite ones where you can just kind of put them where you want. So we're gonna, we're gonna pull that sheet to start. And see, they're all orphans, singulars, solos. Um, I think let's, I think this flower right here is just about perfect for the color that I want, the color of pink that I want to incorporate. So I'm gonna cut that little guy out. Or it's not really that little. I'm gonna cut this big guy out. And I'm also going to hang on to twiggy berry and a leaf. Oh, and these are great too, these little um, wannabe grapes. Those are great too. They're a really pretty lime green color, which um, lime green is an amazing accent color to surprisingly a lot of colors. Like lime green is a very good, um, you know, mm, pop of color. Fits in a lot of places that you wouldn't expect. All right, so let's cut out our little hot pink guy here. And we're gonna go ahead and Let's just plop them right there, okay? And then we'll overlap our pretty little tattoo flower, and then we will um, we will customize and adjust from there. So I'm thinking, actually, I'm thinking let's do them like this. So see our little grid lines there? Perfect for cutting. Perfect for cutting straight lines. All right. So this is about where I want him, kind of, you know, a third of the way in. And we're gonna go ahead and peel off the backing paper, pop them on place. I'm gonna, I'm just lining it up with the bottom, okay? I'm using the bottom as a guide to get it on exactly where I want it. If you want to and you're not sure, you can just line it up perfectly by slapping it on there. You can always, um, Go just, uh, just below the bottom of your surface a little bit, apply it, and then cut off the excess if you wanna make sure you have a nice crisp edge and you don't trust yourself to get it on there quite right. All right, so we're gonna just rub our flower on with our transfer tool or the wooden stick that comes with the transfer is perfectly fine too. So slowly, I'm gonna start peeling once I feel like I've gone over my whole transfer and it's adhering. And you wanna make sure your drawer sides are well and dried from um, the decoupage because if your adhesive is still wet on there, your transfer is not gonna stick. No, ma'am, it's not gonna stick. All right, so I peeled off my acetate sheet that is the backing paper and um, you know, you'd be surprised um, how well the transfers stick on this decoupaged and sealed surface. They stick amazingly well. I think because there's just the slightest amount of texture, it gives the transfer adhesive something to grip onto. I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but it works really well and I like it. All right, so I'm making sure it's on there and there's no bubbles or wrinkles. Look how pretty and bright that color is. Okay, I don't even like pink that much, but I love this, right? 
Okay, I shouldn't say I don't like pink that much. I like all the colors. I'm an equal opportunity colorist. It just, uh, you know, dependent on the application and, you know, where it's going and what it's going with. But look how pretty that is. Pretty in pink. So now we're going to go ahead and add our um, little <coughs> tattoo flowers, what I'm going to call them, because I don't know what kind of flower that is. I, I know, but I, it's slipping my um, mind right now. Um, let me know if you know what kind of uh, flower that is. Is it a... No, I'm not even going to say because I'm going to sound stupid. Um, okay, so yes, I painted under the decoupage tissue. You don't have to. Um, the reason why I did mine white is because the uh, transfer or the tissue, the tissue is a little bit transparent. You can see through it just slightly. So um, I like to give it a nice, crisp, bright white background to make the colors pop. If you want a darker kind of look, you can paint it dark navy or black or, you know, whatever dark color. If you want to impart a little bit of a color onto your design, um, so see the background of my tissue is white. If I want to, um, you know, impart just a tinge of green, you can paint your background green and that will make your tissue paper just have a little bit of a greenish hue. So even though we all have the same transfers to work with and tissue papers. You know, there's a lot of ways you can customize them, make them stand out, make them your own, make them different from the next guys. And, um, you know, just gotta play around with it and use your imagination. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my sharp blade and cut off these little alien eyes here. I don't know what those are. If you know what kind of flower that is, these, these little guys here, please let me know because I'm dying to know. Look, they're like, we see you. But they're pretty anyways. All right, so see how our coral's just overlapping our pink? Um, so even though, yes, I wanted to use coral and pink, that's my color scheme for the drawer side um, to contrast with the outside color on this piece, but like just looking at these two together on here, just like they are, like it's not jiving for me. They're not going together. They're not coordinating. They just look um, kind of mismatched at this point. So um, what I like to do when I want to um, use multiple transfers that maybe don't quite go together um, normally, you just gotta be a little tricky with your placement. So these two alone, I'm not so much a huge fan of just by themselves, okay? This one gets a little lost. There's only one of each, blah. So I'm gonna add a couple little more flowers of each color and, you know, so it, it becomes more of a, um, oh, how do I wanna say this? Almost like a flower arrangement. You know, when you're arranging, making a flower arrangement, you wanna have, you know, equal parts of, you know, each type and color of flower um, equally distributed throughout the bouquet. Does that make sense? If you just put one of each color and type of flower in a vase, like it doesn't, this isn't, it's not really visually pleasing necessarily. I mean, it can be, but um, for whatever reason, adding a few more will um, make them jive together a little better. I don't know if I'm explaining that quite right, but I think you'll see here in a second once I um, add a couple more little guys. So, um, let me find a little pink flower <clears throat> for starter. So I'm gonna find, where did that little pink guy go? Oh, here's a little pink. Actually, let's do a light pink. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, see this little flower right here? Okay, it's not exactly the same color, but it's in the same color family. So I can use, you know, some nice placement to, um, kind of get these colors to mix together a little bit better. I can also use this big guy here. Oh gosh, decisions, decisions. Now I don't know what to do. Um, let's go ahead and grab both of them for now. So the big and the little, we're gonna grab the mommy and the baby pink flowers. All right, and let's go ahead and put this one, let's just say we're gonna plop them right there. Let's just try that for a second. 
And then this guy needs to kind of infiltrate what we have going on here in the little chunk of coral. So for now, let's just say our placement will look something like, you know, that, okay? I know I want to put this guy here. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. We're going to put him there to break up this chunk of coral and get some of that hot pink in there. Rub both directions, up, down, side, side, and peel them off. Oh, and so I should address the fact that with these newer transfers, the newer um, manufacturing process, you'll know the newer ones because they have grid lines on the back. Some people have issues getting them to adhere to each other, just the newer ones, and I get why people say that. You have to rub quite a bit harder um, to get the new ones to stick together. I'm not sure why that is exactly, but it's doable. You just got to give it a little extra elbow grease. And see how that flower, it kind of looks like it just plopped on there, right? Like it doesn't look totally like it lives there. So that's where the little twiggy berries come into play and the leaves and things like that. By placing those little guys strategically, you just create more of a natural floral scene and it really helps to make it look like it belongs there. So I'm not gonna use the whole thing. Well, maybe I will. I don't know, let's see, what is that, do you think? Hmm. I'm just gonna use part of it. Let's go ahead and cut off this part here. I like to cut and chop and place my transfers, customize them, if you will. It's a lot of fun in my book. It may seem like quite a bit of extra work to some people. Um, to me, it's not extra work. It's just part of the process that I enjoy. This is the part that I like. This is fun to me. So if you don't like this part, you may just want to use the uh, transfers as they come. But this is a part that's enjoyable to me and fulfilling is letting my creative juices flow and creating one of a kind looks that um, are not straight out of the tube. Okay, nothing wrong with using it straight out of the tube if you want. I'm just saying um, I like to customize them. And that's just my, you know, what fulfills me. So the little twiggy guy, it's probably harder for you to see on the camera, but see, it just adds a little bit of um, more natural feel to this cluster of flowers. Less like I just shoved them together, more like they just came that way. So what I need to do is add, I need to pick another little cluster of the corals to add somewhere in here. Then we have that pink coral, pink coral kind of um, pattern, if you will. And um, that really helps to create a more um, strategically placed look. Not so much like I tried really hard to slap some flowers together. So I see a little chunk right here that has um, the flowers that I like. Oh, and there's also some up here. These might be perfect. See this little cluster here of um, peachy flowers with some white? That might be just what I'm looking for, um, for right there or right at the bottom. This might be just the ticket, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out. And I wanna save all of the pieces that I'm not using, okay? Don't trash them. I mean, unless they're not usable. But for the most part, if they're usable, you better keep them, okay? Um, waste not, want not. And if you make a boo-boo later on down the road, you'll have a Band-Aid for it um, by way of scraps. All right, so there's our little coral pinkish or coralish white cluster. And I'm thinking we can either do it here and create another little cluster up here in the corner, or we can continue on down here and put that up. I think let's just do another little cluster up top, balance that out so you have a little heavy edge over here, and then you want, you know, you gotta add some weight over here so it's not too heavy visually on one side. So now we just gotta get our angles the way we want them. And angles are important, you know? you. You don't want your, um, you know, one right side up flower next to one upside down flower. That's gonna look not so great, you know, not so natural. Um, but generally, I like to try to point my flowers towards the center of whatever I'm working on. See how I've pointed my flowers kind of towards the center? So that means coming from here, they're gonna kind of point this way. So everything points to the center. Rule of thumb for, you know, how to place, you know, what orientation to place my flowers. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this guy right where I wanna use him, which I think is something like this. There's not a grid line there, so I'm gonna use the old crease trick. I'm gonna crease it, cut it on my crease, and voila. So here we go, cut on my crease. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. See, like pieces like this, I usually pitch them, but I go through many transfers, so I have plenty of them. If you don't have many scraps, pieces like this, you might want to keep because let's say, you know, this little chunk of flour gets gouged or scratched or peels. Um, I can always, you know, just kind of band-aid that in and cover up my boo-boo. So that's why I say keep your scraps. So let's go ahead and line this guy up. Wait, where's the other piece? So we were going to put this, oh gosh, which way we were, we were going to put it like this, right? Okay. So I don't want to completely cover up my decoupage paper. That would be silly. So lining it up from the top, I'm gonna kind of give it some space so you can still see my pretty decoupage paper pattern through and rub it on. Okay, once I got it on, peel off my acetate sheet or backing paper, whichever is easier for you to remember. Give it a good rub with my palm to get the wrinkle smoothed out and um, any bubbles pop. Pop those bubbles. Bubbles and wrinkles are bad. They're bad for your uh, longevity of your um, creation here. So we're gonna go ahead and pop these suckers right there, hugging up right next to our pink flower like their best friends, best friends right here. Starting at the top, I'm gonna line it up straight and then just, you know, smooth it on from there. Okay, so rub it on with our little tool or your wooden stick, whatever you have at your disposal. Okay, and then after we've got our transfers placed and all finished up and we're done with our um, composition there, we will need to seal these flowers. Um, the reason why we wanna seal the transfers, normally to protect them, you know, like if it's on something that will get rubbed up against or, you know, manhandled or whatever, you wanna protect your transfers for that reason, but the drawer sides, you know, they don't get fondled so much, you know, so, but you still wanna seal them. And the reason why you wanna seal your transfer, even on a low traffic area, is because um, uh, they can, and sometimes will dry out and crack and, and start to peel up and curl up if they're not sealed. Um, I've seen it happen, and I've also seen it not happen. So about 50-50 chance of it kind of drying out and peeling up and that's not a chance that I'm comfortable with taking. So I always seal my transfers, um, regardless of their use. Unless it's on a mirror. You don't want to seal it on a mirror. That's the only time I don't seal it. Mirror glass, you know. Oh, there's a little bubble. He's not wanting to come out. Stubborn little bubble there. But bubbles um, and wrinkles, not only are they not very, they're unsightly, they're not cute. But besides that, we wanna get those um, you know, taken care of because again, for the same reason that we're um, making sure it's adhered is that eventually down the road, your sealer could get up underneath those bubbles or wrinkles and um, you know, render your adhesive useless and then it will start to crack and pop and peel up. So sealer can get underneath those little air bubbles and ruin your your piece and it won't happen immediately. It could take a week, it could take a month, it could take a couple days, but um, again, preparation is key. Doing what you can to make sure that your artwork is gonna last is always the best road I think to take. And then I'm just gonna seal it with a uh, water-based sealer. Um, you can use a polycrylic, clear coat, um, satin, flat, gloss, whatever you want. Um, I'm using a satin here and um, just wanna do a nice, not too thick, not too thin, you know, just a nice little 
moderate um, layer of sealer all over. Again, make sure you, spa you pay extra special attention to those edges, okay? You really wanna make sure those edges are sealed and down and um, in place. Because again, that's where a majority of uh, future damage kind of starts is little corners and edges that weren't quite sealed or, you know, they were and then they started to come up, but. Okay, all over. Obviously it's a little hazy right now because it's not dry, but once my clear coat dries, it will be nice and protected and clear and satiny and that's it, voila. So that is that. That is how you uh, can fancy up some sides of your draws and you don't have to use these transfer designs or this tissue design. You can, uh, you know, mix it up. Come up with a really sweet combination that fits your um, vision. But there we go. And see how the flowers seem to look much more, um, they look happier together now. They don't look like so standoffish. They are one big happy family. Now that I've gotten some more of those colors placed on there and kind of um, spread out just a little bit. So there she is. That's our uh, embellished drawer side and the colors I love. So pretty. Um, so I'm going to hop off. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you have any more questions, drop them in the comments. I'll go back through and um, answer any comments I may have missed and that didn't get answered. So um, I will see you all next Monday right here in the Redesign with Prima Facebook group. And we will do some more fun things Prima. All right. Have a great week. Bye.